happened. That night science made its greatest mistake. What? Unknown terror was born that night. What is the terrifying mutant that strikes from behind the shroud of night? That night. That night of the Lepus. A night of total terror. More shattering than your strangest nightmare. What caused the unnatural death, destruction, and panic kill one and thousands take their place? What devil creatures growing weight and size every day are hidden behind the eyes of horror? What can stop them? Vampires, werewolves, ghouls, ghosts. Mummies that come back to life after 3,000 years. The magic moments of terror. Zombie cheerleader here, and I'm I'm really really confused. Anyway, what's new? Hey, spring is in the air. Spring is in the air, and it's time for another fleshy favorite holiday, and that's Easter. Uh, what's Easter? Well, you might not ask that, but I I kind of do. I'm a, I'm a zombie, but anyway, I've got this book here. Fleshy festivals for zombies, and according to the book, all right, uh, Easter is uh, there's a carpenter and some fish, angry Romans, coins, some guy named Lazarus, uh, lots of really cool teachings, more angry Romans, lepers. The lepus. No, not lepus, lepers. What is a lepus anyway? Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, capital punishment, a really big stone, ash palms, and deja vu. <sighs> well, that's what the book says. Uh, you know, that I found that in here. The book says all this stuff. However, I, I found that fleshies celebrate Easter entirely different from the way the book tells me. In fact, I've collected some of it, and you can go ahead and look at what I have on my set right now. I've begun to decorate for Easter. Plushies, you know, they, they really like this Easter thing, but they seem to celebrate it a little bit differently from the book. Uh, I, you know, I couldn't find any lepers or really angry Romans, but I, I did find some chocolate eggs and, and dyed eggs and plastic grass and lots of rabbits and all kinds of really weird Eastery type stuff. And I don't know why... If that's how they celebrate Easter. The book says one thing, and I find all this other stuff. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff together so I can celebrate Easter, too. And while I'm doing all of that, you go ahead and watch this thing, and I'll go start decorating more. The McLeod family lives on the outskirts of a large city. Jay, the youngest of the three boys, helps with the family chores and brings in the firewood. <laughs> Coloring Easter eggs is really interesting. Jay handles the eggs carefully so they'll not break. A 
pink one. Then Jay tries two different colors, pink and green, and discovers they make a faded Wait. lavender. Hey, Steve, pink's a great color on you there, buddy. Shut up, Larry. <laughs> Lepus, and it means rabbit. Um, I guess, you know, back in the day that the lepers was the way the angry ancient Romans said lepus, which is rabbit, and we say rabbit, and we don't say lepus, but we do say lepus, and then there's the lepers. Anyway, hey, this is all in a book, and so I'm not responsible for it. Fleshies really like rabbits. And rabbits are really involved in this Easter thing. In fact, they're everywhere. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and, and flavors, too. You can eat them. They're chocolate. Look, and they're in a box, and I, don't, I can't get into it. Uh, you have, they're fluffy, and they talk, and they say bad things. And they're blue, and they're, you know, all kinds of shapes and sizes and depths and colors and kind of weird stuff and these guys are responsible for Easter and I gotta figure out how they do that because they don't look I don't know they don't look they could where do you put the dead oh the eggs these are the dyed oh I couldn't find any dyed eggs you know that why do they call them dyed are they like dead they mean dead eggs and I couldn't find dead eggs I found plastic eggs so the dead eggs are little zombie eggs that are walk around because they're dead they died and I don't know where they live because I only know zombies. So if you see any dead, died zombie eggs, and where do they come out of the rabbit? Uh, I don't know. This is really confusing, guys. You watch this thing, I've got more stuff about rabbits, and I'll go figure out where the dead eggs come from. They were first shipped to Australia, hoping they'd be a valuable addition to the food supply. Instead, they proved to be a disaster. Rabbit drives and roundups have been called barbarous and cruel, but some way must be found to curb their invasion. seem awfully small to be delivering, you know, all this Easter stuff. Uh, they must, I don't know, they must have some magical Santa Claus powers or something. Are you guys related to reindeer? Because that would explain an awful lot to... Oh, hi! Sally the Zombie Cheerleader back here again. And, you know, we, we saw a bunch of rabbits. Some are kind of cool, some are kind of creepy, and some, I, 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 I think they're related to zombies or something. But, you know... Uh, supposed to eat me besides I taste bad anyway you know you know these rabbits are responsible for delivering the dead eggs or dyed eggs or I can't find any zombie eggs because I don't know where they live and go work and don't know what they eat but anyway I have these eggs and rabbits are responsible for delivering these things and where do the dyed eggs come from anyway because I don't see a hole and I guess maybe they got a I don't know. Look, rabbits are responsible for all this stuff, and I, I don't know. Maybe they lay them. Maybe they go find them. Maybe they go hunt them down and deliver them to you. But these things show up at your door. It's kind of creepy. 
Anyway, I've got more rabbit stuff. Go enjoy while I try to sort out this whole dead, died Easter egg thing. It was as though this plan had been with him all his life, pondered through the seasons, now in his 15th year, crystallized with the pain of puberty. So, why'd you move here? My mom had to get a restraining order against my stepdad. He has emotional problems. Oh, I have those too. What kind of emotional problems does your dad have? I'm going to tell you a little story today about a young man whose life was completely destroyed by these instruments of fear. Donnie is experiencing what is commonly called a daylight hallucination. Has he ever told you about his friend Frank, the giant bunny rabbit? The what? I'm not going to be able to continue this conversation. The giant bunny rabbit. The what? Marie, you got away with it. Stop. All over the American West, there have been similar outbreaks, and the same battle lines have been drawn. Science is doing all it can to help control this population explosion. But when this effort fails, nature's balance gets out of hand. Wow, so you guys have to squat and lay these east dead died eggs, Easter egg things, or what? Oh, hi! Sally the zombie cheerleader, back once again. And you know what? Some of these Easter rabbits are kind of cool. They're kind of creepy, but they're kind of cool too. Anyway, these are the things that show up at your door on Easter morning to deliver or hide your dead, died Easter eggs and all that stuff. All right, stop that! Go find Zombed or Zomboy or something and go chew on them. It'd be kind of fun watching them you know, run around being chased by a, a zombie rabbit. Didn't think they were out there, but they are. Anyway, you know, let's kind of hop away from this whole rabbit thing and talk about the Easter candy. I mean, the rabbits are cool and everything, but, eh! Look, he's made a present for you. And, and they're little rabbit pellets, but I think you guys eat these. It's called Easter candy. It's a little nutty. But, yeah, Easter candy. And apparently, according to the book, you have to, I don't know, eat lots and lots of chocolate and sugary treats and fluffy styrofoam looking things and get really fat. So I think these are the fluffy styrofoam things or, I don't know, very, in, I'm very attracted to these. I don't know why. Anyway, so we have the candy, which again looks like rabbits and lots of rabbit droppings. You can have those and more chocolate and chocolate rabbits. And my God, keep eating this stuff because you'll get really big and fat, and that's more for me to... Oh, never mind. That's just a rumor. Don't Let's not go there. Anyway, I'm going to look at and investigate the candy and the rabbit droppings and the pellets and the dead eggs, and you go check this out, and we'll come back and we'll discuss the rabbit pellets again. These are kind of good. Oh, 
color on you there, buddy. Shut up, Larry. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> hey, did you enjoy the commercial? That was really educational. Anyway, I, I think I'm starting to get this whole fleshy Easter thing if you kind of set the book aside of what I guess they're really supposed to celebrate and celebrate what they actually celebrate. We have an idea what a fleshy Easter is all about. In fact, I've put together a basket down here for you. So, this is a traditional Easter basket. You have squishy, I want to throw this, I don't know if I don't know why I want to do that, but I keep wanting to throw these squishy treats. And I don't have any dyed eggs, but I do have some brains that I made. And I think they will look very lovely. And we have the chocolates that fleshies like. And we have more of the rabbit pellets that actually are pretty good. They're a little nutty. But we have, and, and here's the plastic grass and the basket. And we have the chocolate bunny centerpiece, and it's hollow, so I'm gonna have to break this open and see if there's like a prize in there or something. Anyway, we have a good idea of what an Easter basket looks like, full of fleshy, nibbly goodness that makes them really fat, and more for me. Uh, oh, yeah, one more thing before we move completely away from the book. Apparently, fleshies like to watch Easter parades. It's kind of like Christmas. Maybe the Santa Claus and Easter Bunny have something going on. I, maybe it's the reindeers because they're zombies. Anyway, they like to watch Easter parades and it involves big satellite dish hats and colorful clothes and they're really flamboyant and gay and they're happy and they sing and they dance and there's lots of flowers and flash and apparently you guys like watching this stuff and springy colors and well, how about this? You watch this Easter parade that has been put together especially for my fleshy friends, and I'll work on the rest of my Easter stuff because now I'm making my own Easter version from a zombie's point of view. How's that? Rocky Horror Picture Show is wonderfully weird. All night long he calls her Snooky Oakum, Snooky Oakum. Fiddle up, fiddle up on your violin, lay right on it, rest your chin upon it. Doggone, you better begin and play an overture upon your violin. They're probably foreigners with ways different than our own. It's fabulously freaky. It only happens when I dance with you. That trip to heaven till the dance is through. Come up to the lab and see what's on the slab. <laughs> Nothing really more to add to that. Yeah, it's your holiday, folks. You do what you want to do. Anyway, you can. We've got more fleshy Eastery goodness, and you go watch that. And that was bad.
phone's ringing. Hello? What? No, there's no bunnyman here, and uh, what? I don't know where your eggs are. Oh, the eggs are under a bridge. Well, go under the bridge. The bunnyman's under the bridge? <laughs> oh, look. I don't know any bunnymen, I don't know any bridges, and uh, if your eggs are under a bridge, go to the bunnyman and ask for the eggs that what? Oh, he doesn't have eggs. Well, he's a big bunny. Okay, but he's a rabbit, right? Because if he's a leaper, see, then he's a leaper, and then he has the dead eggs. Look, this is not my problem. I'm trying to do a show here. Go find your bunnyman. Just go find a bridge. It's okay. Tales of the Bunnyman. For decades, the towns around Washington, D.C. have buzzed with tales of a hatchet-wielding man in a furry costume. He kills. He hacks private property with his axe. He threatens small children in their schools. And he's universally known as the Bunny Man. The only solid documentary evidence of the Bunny Man comes from two Washington Post articles that ran in late October 1970. They were based upon a heavily edited police report. The opening paragraph of the first article in the Post set the tone for the investigation. Fairfax County Police said yesterday they are looking for a man who likes to wear a white bunny rabbit costume and throw hatchets through car windows. Honest. The article goes on to describe how an Air Force cadet in the area for the Air Force Navy football game was parked in his car at the 5400 block of Guinea Road, when a man dressed in a white suit with long bunny ears ran from the bushes and shouted, You're on private property and I have your tag number. This strange creature then lobbed a hatchet at the couple through the open car window. The occupants of the car, Cadet Robert Bennett and his fiancée, were unharmed. Later that month, the Halloween issue of the Washington Post the story continued with another tale of a hatchet-wielding, bunny-costumed maniac, this time chopping away at the frame of a new house in Fairfax County. A security guard saw a man with a long-handled axe who appeared to be about 5 feet 8, 160 pounds, and in his early 20s. When the guard approached, the bunny man complained about the trespassers and threatened to knock him on the head and then beat a hasty retreat when the guard went for his weapon. After five months, in March 1971, the local police department investigator in charge of the case, William L. Johnson, marked it as inactive. The few leads that he had received were largely traced back to schoolyard gossip. The only promising lead came from a landowner who had received a phone call from the Axeman, who wanted to meet with him and air his grievances about alleged dumping. The police staked out the meeting, but the Axeman did not show. Even to this day, people visit the Bunnyman Bridge in Fairfax County, Virginia, in hopes of seeing the dreaded Bunnyman. Most of them are unsuccessful, but many of them don't really care. It's a creepy place to visit, and like every creepy place to visit, people will find any excuse to do so. Look! This Easter thing is pretty twisted. I, I don't think I can figure it out. I mean, I don't know where to put the lepers and the lepuses and, and the rabbits or whatever you want to call them. Uh, hey, just just put the, the lepers near the blind guy. And, and where's the fish? How do you figure out how do you figure out this stuff anyway? Uh, God. Ah! Hey! I told the zombie rabbits to go wait near the blind man and go find a fish! Anyway, look. You fleshies, this is my version of Easter. This is the zombie version of Easter. I mean, you guys can't seem to make up your mind if you want chocolate eggs or if you want palms and lentils. I mean, hey, what was that? Anyway, look, I'm trying my best to figure it all out. And, you know, I, I, I just don't, I don't want to, what is this? Hey, anyway, all right, look, something is wrong. Wait, what? They're squishing. I think they're coming for revenge. It's all those years of Cinema Wasteland. Now, back. Go away. All right. This is a zombie cheerleader fearing for her life. And I will see you next time. Ah! Go away. Back. Back. Ah. Ha. 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 Happy Easter.
away, unhappy news away. I'm stepping out with my baby, can't go wrong, cause I'm in right. It's for sure, not for maybe, that I'm all dressed up tonight. All night long he calls her. Snooky Oakum, Snooky Oakum. Fiddle up, fiddle up on your violin, lay right on it, rest your chin upon it. Doggone, you better begin and play an overture upon your violin. The what?